All right, coming back. So yeah. So you bring up an interesting point, Erica, when you say, I assume you're saying creating your own worlds. I think that's an okay assumption. Um, but yeah, it's fantasy is, is a genre that needs a lot of research. Um, it's one of those things where even though you're creating your own wor worlds and you're making up your own your own societies and cultures knowing how cultures develops is important knowing how language develops is important and yes you're creating those things and creating those societies but you almost need to look at how that stuff is developed in our own society to give you a basis to create. Um, it's also important in a lot of ways to be aware of what's out there, especially in that genre, know what tropes and what people do and don't know offhand. Uh, stuff like that's important. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just thought I had. And I apologize again. I am horrible with pronunciation. Absolutely atrocious. <laughs> it is what it is. So, um, in this story, I have. Oh, well. I have. A protagonist who is the killer for hire uh, I wonder if this focus is working again are you working maybe still being weirdly unfocused I th yeah it's probably this color it's too light damn it oh well go back to this then um so I have a pro protagonist who's the killer for hire I have oh sorry what am I thinking that's that's not true Sorry. The perspective character is the killer for hire. And the protagonist is actually the siren. The antagonist is the demon. And then supporting cast are the billionaire, the goblins, the fawn, and the king. I haven't really spent much time outlining the king. I don't think he's super important. Um, I think he's more of a passing reference than anything else. And the goblins are kind of nameless, faceless at the moment, and I'm probably going to keep them that way. I don't know, maybe. The goblins are tough because I haven't really decided how I want them to play out.
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I think I think they're a character I need to write. I just need to write them in a scene, and and it'll come to me. some powers. <laughs> uh, the goblins are thugs and muscle. They are indeed. Um, the goblins were actually, I plan to have them be uh, sent by the demon to get the feather. Sent by the demon to get the feather. There's gonna be a magic feather, by the way. Magic feather. That's an interesting idea, Taz. Um, The feather of Icarus. I was I was actually thinking it would be a feather from the siren, because the siren is a bird. Has wings, you know. I think the feather of Icarus is a little too loaded for me, to be honest. <laughs> but I will note it. It is noted. So the fawn uh, is actually, at least from the way that the prawns were drawn, the fawn is a uh, sacrifice in as part of the demon summoning ritual. Right, but there, no matter. What reference, like, um, no, the goblins are changing for the feather drawing. Um, there's only two to five sirens in existence. Like, people seem to agree that it's a number between two and five. A bunch of different sources. And they were all created at once because they were cursed because of the Persephone thing. Um... So there wouldn't really be a first one, or she would already be one of the first ones. So I guess that interpretation is all is valid either way. Um, but you're right. Um, I mean, you you. I think we're thinking along similar lines because the fawn. Uh, is actually an information broker to the killer for hire. Like he gives, he, the kill, the Merc, I'm gonna call him Merc, god damn it. The Merc uh, goes to the fawn in order to figure out where the siren is because he's been hired to assassinate her. Um, feather. I've never played The Wolf Among Us, uh, unfortunately. It's always something I've wanted to play. I was super into Fables in general. Uh, that's technically considered part of the Fables universe. And I'm a huge fan of Telltale. So.
But I suppose, um, yeah, it's based on fables, isn't it? Is it not? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry, you had me worried there. I was like, I got all confused. I think I own it. Maybe I should play that. Hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'm super impressed by Telltale in general. They are excellent, excellent storytellers. Um, yeah. I do own it. I will play it. <laughs> Hidden Forbidden Lore. I'm writing down all the stuff you're saying, Taz. So I'm into it. I don't know if that's the direction I want to take. But I'm writing it down. Because suggestions are always important. Keep in mind, this is going to be a short story and not a novel, so it's, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be cut for time, right? Um, yeah, uh, there is Stevie. Mostly it's because I get way too distracted with music on, uh, and also because of copyright with posting to multiple uh, sites. I have been meaning to do some search for like some stuff that would work on both YouTube and Twitch, but I haven't found the time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But yeah, uh, I get mad distracted with music on. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that YouTube, um, YouTube won't actually silence it. What it'll do, it'll, it'll monetize your, your videos, which is worse. Um, Twitch muting, I'm not nearly as worried about because I use the Twitch Spotify playlist for like my breaks and stuff. Uh, so that's fine. That stuff all, all works good. Um, and yeah, and they'll only mute the VOD. Which is fine. But yeah. I, I have a bit of a problem with people monetizing my videos. I'm not, I'm not into that. But yeah, it, feel free to listen to your own music. I'm cool with that. Um, I, I encourage that. It's one of those things where, you know, the stuff I like isn't necessarily the stuff anybody else likes. And I want... I want you all to be creating and comfortable and doing your thing while you're watching. Yeah, no, it's all good, DJ. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just because the problem is 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 that stuff that's uh, copy like stuff that's okay to stream on Twitch is not the same as stuff that's okay for YouTube, and there's not really a common list. This case, in between them. Yeah, go ahead, Stevie. No problem. I will give you advice. I'm full of advice. Sure. Fair enough. Fair enough. I like orchestras. I like seeing orchestras. <laughs> A 
the problem is, is I get so, I get really moody when it comes to music. Like I want to listen to a specific thing in a specific time. And I tend to listen to a lot of foreign music and instrumentals and different things, uh, jumping around a lot. And it's not, it's not really the greatest to listen to. That being said, Stevie does a pretty good job with it, I guess. I like her taste a lot. We have similar tastes. Yeah. But yeah, but like... When, when music's playing, I spend more time listening to the music than I spend doing, like... I ignore all of the other things. Like, I ignore chat, and I, I ignore chat, and I ignore... Uh, I ignore a lot of a lot of the other stuff going on when I'm listening to music. Like I can concentrate on the writing, but I ignore the talking and like it, it just becomes harder for me to do all that other stuff. Because I get really into the music. Come on, see, give me give me the question. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Uh, okay. We have similar taste. We really do. I think mine's a little bit more eclectic, but our Spotify playlists are, are not as different as you'd think. <laughs> scene where I have ex-military characters clearing through a deserted strip club and I need to up the tension and introduce two characters but I just got really stuck not sure how to orchestrate the induction of the two characters there's two mercs one of them used to know the MC he is sympathetic and the other merc is violent and will take her down on sight super contradictory CV I'm gonna say don't have the other character find her first <laughs> have yeah I want uh, okay so the way I'm thinking about it is Yeah, but you but you can do that you can do that without doing the sort of tropey having helping her escape thing. Um, the way in which he cuts out her tongue matters. I think it matters a lot more than than the escape thing. Does that make sense? Am I, th am I thinking about this weird? Um, but yeah, I, I, I want the other player, I want the other guy to find her first. I want her, him to kind of like go all gung ho and then you kind of see how hesitant the nonviolent one is. And through that hesitation, when he's asked to um, cut out her tongue, you know, he's kind of the type who like, who like apologizes as he does it. And and stuff like that. Um, do I have any other thoughts? Do I have any other thoughts? 
I think it's more powerful if you reveal his human side in those tense moments than doing this kind of escape thing. So I feel like the escape thing is a little done. Yeah, it does, right? Like, you, you kind of eliminate that weird, like... I suppose it just depends on how it's done. You kind of eliminate a lot of that weird... Uh, like, oh, I'm the bad guy, but I'm really a good person, so I'm going to help you sort of thing. And you get to this, like, no, I'm a bad guy, but I'm not a bad guy. I don't know. I like that name, Daz. It's cool, man. Uh, the short story is tentatively titled Fear the Siren. Uh, because, yeah. It's, it's kind of about... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I was kind of playing on, uh, we talked about this last stream about titles, but I was kind of playing on uh, the idea of the Siren's Call, and also on old monster movies, and uh, stuff like that, where, you know, the demon fears the Siren. That's what starts the whole thing. The demons fear... Sends the billionaire to hire the killer for hire, who then goes to try and assassinate the siren, who sets off a chain of events, blah, 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 etc., etc., etc. But yeah, playing off a little bit of that weird, what it means to be a monster. What do monsters fear? Oh, that's totally great advice. The name should be the central component of the story that is missing from the story. And, and I think that's exactly what this title kind of did for me. Was it, it consolidated everything that I was thinking about. Like all those weird unlabeled things in the back of my head. And it, it kind of is that. Because... There's not going to be a, a moment where people admit they're, they're afraid of the siren or whatever else, but it's, it's going to be fairly implied, or at least able to be interpreted. Um, so yeah, I think, I think it does that in a, in a certain sense. I could be wrong. I'm often wrong. <laughs> Need to remind myself every now and again. Oh, you're not dumb, Drani. You're just different. You don't, you don't write. <laughs> and you're totally right, Taz. I mean, that is even more true in Greek myths than it is in, in the way that we, we deal with demons nowadays. Um, I mean, Greek myths are, are manifestations of you know, things like vengeance and fury and uh, all that other, like, like that's what, that's what demons literally are in Greek mythology. So that makes total sense. So then what, what emotion is this demon reflecting?
Wait, can I be bi artistical as well? I, I am a musician. I play music sometimes and stuff. I can kind of draw, I guess. Not really. <laughs> not really. <laughs> Let's be honest, not really. Um, yeah. Yeah, totally. Uh, I play guitar and piano. I was in a ton of bands in high school and stuff. Uh, Uh, yeah, I was in a couple of jazz bands playing guitar, saxophone, uh, and clarinet, and I was in a uh, school band playing clarinet, and I was in a couple other bands, like some local stuff, and I had my own my own jazz band, which is like a four piecer where I played guitar and sax, um, stuff like that. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, I suppose. Taz. I mean, that makes sense. But I guess I guess the important key there is what What usefulness does the curse have? And what's the fallout of, of it not being there? <laughs> yeah okay so I'm gonna do my wrap up I think that's all the thoughts I got about characters for now um, so normally this would be the time when I would talk about the accidental book club but I've been having a lot of trouble recently um, if you missed the beginning of the stream, I was talking a lot about conversations I've been having with friends of mine about streaming and what I'm doing and what I'm doing wrong or right or whatever, you know, feedback. And no one talks about the book club. I'm the only person who ever talks about the book club. Um, I like the idea of the book club, but it's really hard for me to stay on task with homework like that. And I'm not doing very well at it. <laughs> And I honestly don't think many people are reading along with me. So I'm thinking of cutting the book club in general. That being said, thanks to Stevie's awesome suggestion, I might actually be pitching the same idea to a writing website uh, as a column. Because I think it'd be more interesting to them than it would be to, to a stream. Um, no, um, it's actually a book club about it's, it's so the the pitch is, is that I have a ton of books on my shelf uh, about writing that I've never read because like most people if I buy a book and don't touch it for two weeks it just sits on the shelf and I never touch it again <laughs> uh, so that being said I think there's a lot of stuff in there that's really awesome and I've read parts of some of them that have really change the way I look at, at, at writing and, and other artistic pursuits. So yeah, everyone does. <laughs> totally. Um, so I originally started off with the idea that I would read kind of like one every two weeks or one every month or, or something like that and, and talk about them on stream. But it, it felt a little too forced and it's one of those things where, you know, people watching Twitch don't really do homework <laughs> all the time. Uh, so it's kind of unreasonable to expect people to read along with me and stuff like that. Uh, but I like the idea. So I'm going to pitch it to a writing website, which I think would actually be a much better audience for it. Where, you know, people can, can digest it at will 
and see what you're saying. And uh, yeah, so that was my plan. Um, yeah, that's my plan. Anyway, uh, yeah, thoughts. It's hot. These lights are really hot. Oh my god. Uh, thank God it's not ridiculously warm here today. Because the last couple streams, or the last couple weeks, I have been literally melting. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it's interesting that you mentioned that, CD. Uh, I'm planning on having a guest on in a couple weeks. Well, I only do like one stream a week, so uh, I think that's fair. Um, totally. Um, and I will be doing that, Taz. Uh, if you missed the beginning of the stream, I guess I'll just reiterate kind of my plan. Uh, next week is my birthday. Uh, on the 11th. So the stream on the 10th is actually going to be a birthday stream. Yay! Go me! Um, and I have plans for that. Uh, super secret fun plans and I will let people know as they need to know but it's going to be it's not going to be writing per se just so you know um. <laughs> uh, but that week I'm off I took a week off from work paid vacation good, t good things <laughs> all good Taz no worries um so I'm going to do um, drafting every day for that week on stream. And I'm going to do a lot of that. I'm going to read. Uh, I'm going to read. I'm going to write. I'm going to talk about what I'm doing and my like thought process as I write. Um, try and get that out there. Try and be productive. Keep me to a schedule, as it were. And I will be posting something in my Discord. Uh, if you're not a member of my Discord, you can join. It's almost never used. But I'm hoping it will be soon. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna post a, a straw poll or something like that on Discord, uh, so people can vote what time would be best for me to stream. Because um, I'm gonna have free time, so yeah, I'm really excited. And then at the end of that week, on the Sunday, yeah, I'm gonna. It's probably not gonna be evenings. It's probably gonna be afternoons, Johnny. So on the Sunday of that week, I'm gonna have a special guest and um, my friend Sam is gonna come on and we're gonna talk about writing and he's gonna interview me and hopefully it'll be good. <laughs> I'm hoping it'll be good. But yeah, uh, so we're gonna talk about what I've done that week and sort of process and whatever. I'm kind of leaving it up to him to come up with topics uh, more so than me planning it so that It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting for me. He'll ask good questions. He's a, he's a, he's a very good guy for that stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'm planning on doing that. So yeah, I think that, I think that's everything. I think I've got everything. Yes. I hope not. <laughs> I hope not, Johnny. I told him to tone it down. <laughs> That we need to not be so academic all the time. <laughs> so yeah, um, I think that's it for me for today. I've been going for almost three hours. I usually call three hours my max. Um, I think it's been fairly productive. I've detailed out a lot of character thoughts. I've got a lot of questions. I love, I love questions. Questions are my jam. <laughs> you can be academic with me anytime you want, Stevie. Um, I don't know, Rob C. What are you doing? What are you doing? Forget my stream? Mm, disappoint. Um, yeah. So I think that's it for me. I think I covered all the things off my agenda. Um, oh yeah, 
Shoutouts, right. Um, so, if you want to check out any of the previous episodes, you can go to my website, which is down here. Oh, I had the point so much better last week. I'm failing at it this week. Yeah. So, yeah. If you head up to my website, uh, they have all the VODs of the previous episodes, uh, as well as on Twitch channel. I've made them highlights. Um, there's also various links of things that I found useful or interesting uh, in regards to the topic of the week. Um... Uh, and uh, past work I've done on uh, the short story and some other stuff. Uh, there's also links there to contact me via Twitter, email, whatever. Uh, and feel free. Let me know what you think of the show. Let me know, think of what I'm doing. If you have suggestions, whatever. Let me know. I'm all good. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I probably have too many mods for the amount of people who actually show up. <laughs> That's okay. It's okay. It's a, it's a representation of my love. There you go. Feel loved. Hearts. Um. So yeah. Uh, my name is Brendan. This has been Accidental Origin. Thanks for coming and chilling me, guys. Thanks for joining for the host. Thanks for Stevie, to Stevie for actually uh, showing up this time. Subtle dig. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I will catch you all later. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Peace out, y'all.